All right, hello everyone, and thank you so much for joining our webinar today. My name is Emma Sears. I am the program coordinator for the Parkinson Association of the Rockies. Um, we, today we will be having a sponsored webinar um, from Blue Sky CBD. Before we begin, I'm just gonna go over a few housekeeping items. The first is that this webinar will be recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel shortly after. Um, the second thing is we'll wait until the end to do questions. There are two ways that you can ask questions, either by pressing the little hand raise icon, um, which will allow you to verbally ask your question once I unmute you. The second way is if you wanna type your question into the question bar, and then I can ask that at the end. Um, and then finally, please fill out the survey at the end. It helps us with all of our future programming um, events. And with that, I will turn it over to Blue Sky CBD with Dr. D. Good afternoon, gang. Um, can you guys hear me okay? Um, they cannot respond to you unless oh, I... You guys, oh, you can hear my audio. Good. So, hey, I'm, I'm Dr. Eric Dorninger. I'm a uh, doctor of naturopathic medicine, or an ND, a Nancy David, and I also got my master's of science in acupuncture at Bastyr University. I think many of you know the work of uh, Lori Michley. Uh, she's an ND and a PhD classmate of mine who runs Parkinson's camp at Bastyr University every summer. We have one of her understudies and my understudy, uh, Dr. Dana Bierke, who works out of Roots and Branches here in, in, in Louisville, Colorado. And Parkinson's is near and dear to my heart. And, and one of the reasons is because we can do so much for it. And we are not anti-prescription. Most of the Parkinson's patients we see are on levodopa, carbidopa. Uh, we just know that there's much more. Parkinson's is, is what you have, but is not why you have. So in our clinic, we spent a lot of time dealing with neuroinflammatory disorders like migraines and depression and Parkinson's and MS and ALS and, and, and dementia. And, Etc. And I tell patients with Parkinson's, our first goal is to stop progression and improve quality of life. Once in a while, you can even see um, cool things happen on brain MRI with NeuroQuant, and uh, it's exciting times for uh, for Parkinson's. We're we're on the cutting edge of figuring out underlying causes of inflammation that are not being talked about yet, and they're actually starting a small clinical trial right now um, on an environmental trigger for, for Parkinson's, and I'd love to come back in a year and tell you all about that. Uh, what we want you to understand about Parkinson's is it's an immunological disease with a neurological fallout, right? So you don't have a brain disease, you have an inflammatory, nonsensical uh, immune system that is burning down the brain. So you have an immune disease with a, with a brain fallout. And one of the reasons I got interested in uh, cannabidiol is it as a novel anti-inflammatory that can help immune modulate cytokine storms and calm down uh, inflammation so that you can feel better in the brain. So I have uh, one of our founding members, um, Patrick Kohlberg, uh, is a, a was a lab guy. And he would come to my office on the regular for cardio biomarkers. And I'm a big heart scan and carotid ultrasound guy. And I would say, no, Patrick, that doesn't predict who's going to heart attack or stroke. You still need an EBCT or 256 slice Siemens dual source heart scan and a carotid ultrasound. Show me the money. Is there heart disease here or not? If you have plaque, we can track that plaque. And I would just grind out Patrick. When Patrick started Blue Sky, they wanted someone to bring legitimacy on the research end of cannabidiol and explain to people why we do what we do and how we do it. I took the job in all sincerity because I needed to force myself to learn about cannabidiol. As a doctor of Mr. Illness who sees chronic illness all day, I would hear a glory story about hemp and or cannabidiol or even THC, and then I would hear wild, not so good stories. Right. I, I, I share on other podcasts, I had one morning where a patient came in and had incredible results with her knee pain and a neighbor had given her this bomb uh, for the knee and it was actually working. That afternoon, I had a patient who took full spectrum extract and was literally tripping while she was brushing her horse from 0.3% uh, THC or less. So radically different experiences with, um, with full hemp and, and um, the way we even use the nomenclature of CBD, et cetera, et cetera. So today is to really be an educational 
uh, moment of I spent 90 hours combing over peer review literature literally to, to put this slide deck together. This is a modified slide deck of everything um, we've learned and talked about on YouTube. CBD 101, a practitioner's overview of cannabidiol has all the studies that reference what we're talking about. But this is me again. Uh, I'm an MD at Bastier, licensed acupuncturist from Bastier. I did my pre-med um, and uh, uh, Bachelor of Arts in Kinesiology, which is now called Integrative Physiology, same program, but a but, uh, modernized name. And, and I'm a buff, so go buffs. Um, and then we also do a podcast called the, uh, the Vitality Hour, that's on YouTube. I often have a medical doctor named Dr. Bill Blanchett, who's my favorite internist in the whole planet, um, come on and we uh, talk everything from heart scans to tooth abscess, driving heart attacks, and, and everything in between. So feel free to check that out if you want. Um, we, are, we are never trying to sell anything on the podcast, but clean data-driven facts. So there's so much misinformation. Um, again, I literally took this job of Blue Sky to straighten out what is cannabidiol. So we want to um, create healthier communities. We want to um, continue our long-term support of Colorado Association Naturopathic Doctors and improve integrated model. Uh, I have concerns with the holistic community focusing a little too much on modalities and supplements, which are an important part of my practice, but not at the risk of missing underlying causes. As many of you know, Parkinson's patients have higher rates of sleep apnea. The number one ingredient for manufacturing dopamine in your brain is oxygen. If you are hypoxic, you are going to drive your Parkinson's, right? We know that apnea goes up with altitude. So these are the things we want to do in the integrated community. We want to take the best of conventional model. There's good drugs. There's Rob Peter to pay Paul drugs. And then there's trashy drugs and, and, and interventions. And the same thing with holistic medicine. We, we don't want to just um, supplement load people at the risk of finding underlying causes for neuroinflammation. Um, we, we're very sincere about um, uh, purity and potency. Potency and purity are, are there's no other nonsense in there. Um, we have a gelatin gel cap with MCT oil and cannabidiol isolate, and we have tinctures with uh, MCT oil, cannabidiol isolate, um, cannabigerol or CBG isolate, and then CBN isolate in, in, in different formulas. So we're really big on, I'm not participating in any uh, nonsense of uh, dirty products or mislabeled products, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It's, 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 it's not um, in my heart to be a part of a company like that. The other thing I like is zero THC. So if you enjoy THC as a Parkinson's patient, who cares? If, if it's working for you, that's great. Um, some Parkinson's patients tend toward anxiety and the CB1 receptor is where THC binds and that can actually upregulate anxiety, panic, hallucinatory thought. Uh, CB1 receptors also upregulate in things like schizophrenia. And I actually think uh, THC is contraindicated for, for, for most of my Parkinson's patients who can feel that panic and, and anxiety or, or frailty. Um, and uh, and so our products are zero THC. This also allows us to apply them with military and police officers and 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 fire and, and government workers um, who are not allowed to have THC. Um, and they're third party tested with readily available certificates of analysis. So we have an independent party saying, yep, that's just CBD and MCT. And yep, 30 milligrams is truly 30 milligrams. And in the nutraceutical industry, 10% uh, above or below a milligram doses is, is what's, is what's um, honest on potency. So if you had a 30 milligram and it tested between 27 to 33 milligrams, you got a clean product. So how does it work? Um, this is a very, very multifactorial molecule. It is working with a lot of systems. It, in, CBD interacts with the body's cannabin, um, cannabinoid receptors, CB1 and CB2, and allows for self-made and exogenous ingested modulation balancing the neuroendocrine immune system. What does that mean? So CB1, this is a receptor. It's a lock where the key, THC, binds. CBD actually binds in a little side keyhole and kicks THC off the CB1 receptor. So what I just told you is the treatment for a teenager who just got too high, or you say, hey, my friend said, try a smoke a joint for my Parkinson's, I'm uptight. 
um, and you just get paranoid and uptight, go get your bottle of Blue Sky CBD and take 60 to, to 300 milligrams of uh, CBD and you'll come right down. So, so old marijuana back in the day used to be very balanced on cannabidiol and THC and then people wanted to get hyper altered and hyper intoxicated so they bred out the CBD and bred up the THC. Interestingly, that's having a backlash where people say, I don't want to just sit on the couch and stare at the wall. I actually want to be productive and feel uplifted. So people are being more drawn to CBD. Um, and then the CB2 receptors are more about immune modulation and inflammation in the body. So endogenous means self-made cannabinoids, and they are derived from fats. Um, and they are signaling molecules involved in reward, appetite, metabolism, mood, memory, circadian rhythms, and neuroprotection. If you do well on the ketogenic diet, one of the reasons you do well on the ketogenic diet is you're feeding your body more fats to provide the log to cut the endocannabinoid canoe out of to help protect your brain and dampen and, and calm inflammation. If you're fat phobic and you're stuck in the 80s and you're not eating any avocado or olive oils or grass-fed beef to slaughter or wild salmon, et cetera, you, you're gonna get in trouble with um, an endogenous cannabinoid deficiency because you're literally not bringing in the raw material to, to make those fats. CBD's mechanism of action, this is kind of the highfalutin science. There's four major targets, receptors, which I talked about, lock and key mechanisms, ion channels, that's how things flow in and out, even flowing in and out of things like the mitochondria to make energy, enzymes and transporters. If endocin, and I'm gonna talk mostly about receptors today because I think that's very accessible. Um, and uh, then we have um, endocannabinoid tone. So endocannabinoid tone, the, the profile of what CBD does for a body is closest to the runner's high. So we're going to talk about how it enhances serotonin and dopamine and GABA for feeling cool, calm, and collected. And it, and, and it feels very much like the, the profile you see with um, how you feel after uh, a good workout. Not overtraining, but not being a couch potato. Um, if endocannabinoid tone is inadequate, you get a lowered pain threshold, so you feel much more frailty. You know, if someone punches you in the arm when these um, endocannabinoids and subsequent endorphins are up and working, you, you'll say, "Hey, that's all you got." But if you if you if they punch you and 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 all these are done, you say, "You violent jerk! Why did you do that?" Right? No one should go around punching people. But you know what I mean? It's 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 life is is overwhelming sometimes and we have uh, endocannabinoids endorphins and neurotransmitters to tolerate stress to cope with stress to be able to move through ability to finish tasks and be productive and have fun and enjoy a good workout etc um, digestive disturbances this is another place we know um, parkinson's patients can get very constipated everyone thinks about parkinson's as just a destruction of the dopaminergic centers of the brain, the dopamine producing centers. It also hurts the gabinergic and the acetylcholinergic, acetylcholine and the, serotonin and, and the serotonergic. So all of your neurotransmitters crash with, with Parkinson's, but we put so much time into dopamine because dopamine also assists with movement. So, so we really think of Parkinson's as this movement disorder when it's really an inflammatory disorder with a movement fallout, but a whole lot of other fallout. And the other place this falls out is gut motility. There are two major neurotransmitters studied for gut motility, serotonin and acetylcholine. And um, part of why we think CBD helps with GI issues is because of its upregulation of serotonin. So we'll talk about how endocannabinoids and exogenous CBD isolate really helps modulate uh, digestion. Mood dysregulation and sleep dis disruption. So endocannabinoids work by keeping everything deflamed and everyone talking to each other and levels of your neurotransmitters recycled. CBD activates the 5-HT1A receptors. If you ever had a serotonin agonist drug for a migraine like Imutrex, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the 5-HT um, for increased serotonin, CBD isolate. I'm not talking about hemp extract. This is all peer-reviewed published on cannabidiol isolate. D2 receptors for increased dopamine and boosts GABA-A. Um, GABA-A is your cool, calm, and collected. Not sedated, but your cool, calm, and collected. Right? It's a very black belt martial arts experience where I'm relaxed, but I'm engaged. 
CBD is a novel anti-inflammatory neuroprotector and productivity molecule. So CBD stimulates the serotonin. Serotonin is enthusiasm, right? So serotonin, the 5-HT1A receptor is the most ubiquitous serotonin receptor. It's the most, it's the most locks where serotonin can bind in the central nervous system and is a target for several anti-anxiety and antidepressant meds. 5-HT1 activation enhances enthusiasm and improved mental acuity, decreased aggression, increased social gregariousness, decreased impulsiveness, inhibition of drug-seeking behavior, and supports libido and arousal. I know many of you know Lori Michely, my classmate, dear friend, and I, she's doing the red cap where she's literally harvesting over 3,000 Parkinson's patients, and that's pd.org, um, and she's seeing what works. Glutathione helps, um, CoQ10 helps, uh, half a glass of wine helps. We don't know if red's better than white. Gluten-free helps, dairy-free helps. But the number one predictor of, of Parkinson's progression in Dr. Mishley's studies is loneliness. And we know a lot of Parkinson's patients start withdrawing and isolating. And that's why these um, Rocky Mountain um, Parkinson's Association, these other associations that build community and also build movement is a one plus one equals three. You got to get out there, join a choir, join an association, join a community, join a, a bike riding club. If you're not riding bike yet, join a walking club, um, do some yoga, meet your body where it's at, but you have to move and you have to commune. Right, it, it, loneliness is the largest predictor of Parkinson's progression. And uh, Dr. Mishley published uh, a second paper that said the pandemic worsened Parkinson's outcomes. Um, it, it, this is another fallout of the pandemic was I, more isolation for, for Parkinson's patients. So um, the 5-HT uplift can get you a little more enthusiastic about going to choir, or going to a spin class or, or going to yoga or or even just hanging out with your neighbor on uh, on the front bench. So 5-HT1 agonists are shown in the literature to dampen nausea. This may be responsible for the anti-nausea effects seen with cannabidiol isolate users. Dopamine is ambition, drive, feelings of self-worth, hopefulness, decisiveness, ability to finish tasks, part of our libido. Dopamine is courage. It's yes, take a risk, go for it. I'm gonna go to that new class. I don't care if I'm out of shape. I don't care if I'm shuffling. I don't care if I feel frail and slow today. I'm gonna to still take a risk. I'm gonna go for it. That's dopamine, right? And we know Parkinson's tries to steal that from us and we wanna make sure that we're supporting these receptors so that you can feel engaged and alive and have a, have a reasonable quality of life. Cannabidiol is a partial agonist of the D2 receptors. Recent research suggests cannabidiol as the first apparent exception to the general rule that all antipsychotics either block or interfere with dopamine at brain dopamine D2 receptors. We use two things with levodopa carbidopa. We use um, uh, CDP choline, and that's a studied uh, choline that um, uh, enhances uh, levodopa carbidopa, so you need less levodopa carbidopa on average. Um, with uh, CDB choline, uh, an acetylcholine agonist, and we use CBD isolate. When you're when you're working with levodopa carbidopa, we always play well with your prescribing uh, primary or neurologist, but we really want to see arm swing is starting to improve. That's how Dr. Mishley um, works with levodopa carbidopa. She's a full prescribing naturopathic doctor in Washington State, and, and we have limits on our prescribing scope here in, in Colorado, but she will um, do CDP, uh, CBD, and levodopa carbidopa until she sees that arm swing and the exercise and movement come back on. Then you go make more of these endorphins by having a workout, and then we see if we can back off, right? But I, I love as a naturopath, she's not, um, so not hate that drug. So you got to push it to get what you're supposed to get out of it. And if its effectiveness is starting to wear off, you can you can um, mix it with CDB choline and 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 you know you have to watch for tardive dyskinesia and side effects and all that stuff. But but um, CBD plays very well with um, the majority of prescriptions. I'll talk about the ones you want to be careful with at the end here. So. Um, other research is, um, the other thing that's wild about cannabidiol, it's, it's the only antipsychotic that um, has controlled and normalized schizophrenia without crashing dopamine. So most of your antipsychotics, Abilify and Lamictal and, and, and uh, uh, Seroquel, they shut down dopamine, right? And that's where you can get, hey, the person's not running down Pearl Street naked, 
However, they don't have a personality anymore, right? And you squashed it too hard, right? So CBD is amazing. And we think it, uh, it, it works because it's dampening glutamate. And glutamate is an excitatory agitating neurotransmitter in the brain that makes you feel obsessive compulsive and ruminate and paranoid and anxious um, and depressed. So I really love this um, molecule cannabidiol for um, mood disorders too, for depression, anxiety, and um, schizophrenic thought and paranoia and obsessive compulsive. It's, 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 it's a miracle molecule. So, and every time I'm talking about that, Make sure you're not you you have clear nomenclature. I'm not talking when your neighbor, neighbor's talking about full spectrum hemp. That is a hundred plus phytocannabinoids with terpenes and myrcene and other things in there. We're talking about straight cannabidiol. Um, when there's more pain, we add the CBG as well. Adenosine receptors are also ubiquitous in the body. Modulate cardiac function, inflammation, dopamine, glutamate effects on the brain. Caffeine inhibits the adenosine 1 and 2 receptor. CBD stimulates that. So I'll give you the punchline here. And if you feel a little bit of a lift off an espresso, but you're also that jittery person, check your blood sugar. You got to eat animal protein as a thin, lanky body type if you're doing caffeine. Uh, actually better to not do caffeine and get your, your high off of workouts. But what happens with the, ca with the caffeine, it inhibits this adenosine 1 and 2, and you can get a little... Um, a little shaky. CBD stimulates the adenosine uh, one receptor and can help with things like arrhythmia and also just feeling uh, anxious and shaky. Uh, studies suggest CBD also stimulates the adenosine two receptor, enhancing anti-inflammatory and potentially neuroprotective effects in the mouse model. So I'll always tell you when this is done in a human study or mouse trial, and, and the mouse models on cannabidiol are, are unreal and so promising. The human studies are small pilot trials and very impressive, but, but need to be uh, done on a larger scale. Stimulation, except for the schizophrenia one, that was 84 uh, patients. Um, stimulation of adenosine results in a calming effect and does not account for CBD's uplifting effects, but may provide as a remedy for the caffeine jitters. So we are not, there's a difference between calming and sedating. So dating is kind of knocking you out. Calming is feeling cool, calm, and collected. And that's important for things like attention deficit, focus, memory issues, because if, you're, if your brain is running like jazz hands, ah, you don't think straight. You don't remember. You're not present. You're vibrating. You're, 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 you're just going, Ugh. So So this is a very anchoring molecule. In cell and animal studies, CBD is showing reuptake inhibition of norepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, GABA, and uh, anandamide. So anandamide is an uh, endogenous cannabinoid, that is self-made cannabinoid that you make from eating healthy fats and moving your body. Uh, ananda in Sanskrit means bliss molecule. So um, Dr. McCollum out of Hebrew University in Israel did a lot of the studies on phytocannabinoids and endogenous cannabinoids, self-made cannabinoids, and they named this one anandamide because it makes us feel that exercise high, uplifted, productive, engaged, relaxed, um, and instead of being overwhelmed and, and depleted. So reuptake of these neurotransmitters results in increased signaling concentration of neurotransmitters and changes the expression of your nervous system. If you're on an SSRI, I tell people, Google serotonin-6 syndrome, look for those, um, those symptoms, write them down, and if you trial 30 to 300 milligrams of CBD isolate, just be aware that you might be the first person that tips into serotonin-6 syndrome being on an SSRI and, and cannabidiol. I haven't gone higher than 300 milligrams when people are on SSRIs. Um, but we haven't seen serotonin six syndrome once uh, with a with a blue sky taker who's on an SSRI. In 20 years, I've only seen it once. Period. Um, and they were on a very high dose of St. John's Wort with an SSRI. And and the herb St. John Wort is much more potent serotonin um, reuptake uh, than than C CBD. So. Although seemingly milder, this mechanism is similar to Prozac's SSRI effect on serotonin, where serotonin release gets trapped in the synapse and keeps signaling feelings of enthusiasm. What I love about that is 
the number one predictor of progression of Parkinson's in Dr. Mishley's research is loneliness. And that's due to isolation and lack of engagement, apathy, right? The opposite of that is enthusiasm. Serotonin is not the happy molecule, it's the enthusiastic molecule. It's that I want to engage, I want to play, I want to hang out, right? Um, I want to do movie night, you know, even when you don't feel well, or you have and you know, whoo, we, we hiked Mount Sinus yesterday and I made it. And, you know, next day, enjoy watching the avalanche win the Stanley Cup with, with a friend or two over, right? So, so that's what we, that's what we want um, to, to kick in is if you're having a trouble getting over that hump of engagement, get out there um, and, and, and a little serotonin boost helps. So the multitude of neurotransmitter inhibition by CBD suggests CBD is a balancing, modulating mood molecule versus more linear, active, prescriptive mood medicines, right? So if you imagine a sound engineer in a recording studio and they got all those buttons and dials and you have the bass player and the guitarist and the drum player and the vocals and they got to get that all to mix well together, that's modulation in biochemistry physiology and that's what um, cannabidiol is good at. Is cannabidiol a self-made cannabinoid? No, you take it from the outside world and it modulates the endocannabinoids, um, arachidonyl ethanol amide, phenyl ethyl amide, and oleo ethanol amide. Guess where oleo ethanol amide comes from? Olive oil. Guess what those Mediterranean diet eaters are getting more of? Endogenous cannabinoids from olive oil. Palm oil is going to produce um, uh, palmetto ethanol amide. Fish oil also downstreams to self-made cannabinoids. And then cannabidiol helps recycle them and, and keep them around. CBD is a novel neuroendocrine immune modulating anti-inflammatory. It's an endocannabinoid promoter. It also helps enhance your self-made ones. Don't be fat phobic, right? The 80s are over and everything public health taught us from the 80s is wrong. Lipid panels don't predict who's going to heart attack and stroke. Take the food pyramid, literally turn upside down, and you have some resemblance of a healthy diet. Salt is not the devil. Eggs uh, aren't the devil. And nerves do regrow. We do have pre and post brain MRIs with Neuroquan in our clinic of neurogenesis uh, and, and enhanced uh, uh, tissues. CBD is an isolate from the hemp plant. High levels of CBD and CBD is a safe alternative to many over-the-counter prescription anti-inflammatories. All right, so this is what the sky gels look like. CBD is not THC, although some CBD hemp products are contaminated with THC. The Farm Bill in 2018 classifies hemp as 0.3% THC or less. And we know that some uh, full spectrum products, unfortunately, are, are more than that. We also know that some people are sensitive to 0.3% THC. That was the woman who was hallucinating while she was brushing her horse. She took a full hemp extract and get high, right? To each their own, if you like to smoke a joint, it's, I, I, my preference is being um, uplifted and productive. I, I, I like to, to, to get stuff accomplished. So I'm, I'm more of a CBD taker, but some people are productive when they, when they smoke a joint. I just want to make sure some people understand anxiety, obsessive compulsive, ruminations, um, schizophrenia, bipolar are actually contraindicated for THC. Um, CBD is not intoxicating and does not get you high, but does have beneficial psychoactive effects. So I hate when people say cannabidiol is not psychoactive. That's a bunch of hooey. It's an uplifting productivity molecule. It doesn't get you intoxicated, right? You're very functional. Um, almost again, like when you just go for a nice exercise, you go, great, we're going to go to Home Depot, we're going to get this out, I'm going to lay that side, that kind of, that kind of feeling. Um, CBD does not show the safety concerns of liver, kidney, and intestinal lining damage like non and inflammatories, Advil, aspirin, Tylenol, and leave. I would put Advil, Tylenol, and leave in the water if it, if it didn't destroy intestinal lining, liver, and kidneys. These are miracle drugs. They're, they're potent anti-inflammatories. There's a time and a place where you just cannot take them long-term without damaging side effects. There was a mouse study in Arkansas that's very polluted and convoluted on um, CBD affecting liver enzymes. And that's a bunch of hooey. There was a well-done study on uh, frontline workers in Brazil. These are nurses and medical doctors who are on the front line with the pandemic. And they randomized them, one, two, one, two, one, two, and the ones got uh, therapy, a counselor, and an exercise DVD. Remember, this is Brazil, still giving out exercise DVDs. Um, the other group got um, 
therapy and exercise DVD and 300 milligrams of cannabidiol isolate, not full hemp extract cannabidiol. Two of the 84 participants did have liver enzymes elevation. So I don't, I'm not, I don't have access to everything else those people are doing. We have never seen elevated liver enzymes in my clinic off dosing 300 milligrams of CBD. However, I have a different patient population. You've been screened for apnea. We cleaned up the diet. You're working out. Um, if you're taking caffeine in excess, um, uh, we're talking about that. If you're um, on polypharmacy, we've worked with your prescriber to maybe get you off other drugs that are liver damaging, right? So, so, but I say that um, just in, 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 you know, hard work and healthcare workers that might be eating donuts all day, they have two elevations of liver enzymes. So I tell people, if you're going to go up to 300 milligrams, which I actually recommend for, for a stiff case of Parkinson's, um, have your primary care or your neurologist or, or your naturopath or functional medicine doc just run a metabolic panel to look for liver enzymes uh, two to four weeks out. Sometimes with flush niacin, which we use all the time for preventing heart attack and stroke, you will um, raise liver enzymes very transiently, but when you redraw those six to eight weeks out, they're totally normal, right? So, so we're talking about long-term elevations of liver enzymes. Um, what do we know about Parkinson's? Small pilot trial, this is what we know so far, for sure. Um, quality of life scores um, statistically increased. Um, motor scores, nighttime sleep, and emotional dysregulation all, all improved, right? So people felt more grounded, cool, calm, collected than themselves. Um, they, 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 they just felt better, right? You're going to see other studies that um, there's some inconclusive, and if you go to clinicaltrials.gov, and Schutz and, and a whole bunch of people are all over cannabidiol. And, um, and Parkinson's. So, so over the next couple of years, we should have some better done larger scale trials. But um, uh, people had improvements in rigidity and felt better. Um, and, and again, uh, we have a lot of glory stories on cannabidiol, but it is in my clinic part of an overall approach to inflammation hunting, inflammation killing, and then supporting uh, the brain. And, and neuron function. Um, we have a whole bunch of case studies that you can get on um, Blue Sky Dash CBD. This is Kale, this is one of our anxiety studies. The one that there's actually really good studies on uh, the, the symptom, even though they're pilot trials, is anxiety. And one of my favorites is they randomized 24 people who had fear of public speaking, one, two, one, two, one, two. And the ones got the dummy oil and the and the twos got the 300 milligrams of cannabidiol. And they had a statistically significant reduction in their anxiety levels when they gave their presentation on public speaking. And they also delivered the content better, which, which makes sense, right? First of all, you're less anxious, so you're going to flow. And then your dopamine and serotonin is getting a little bit of a boost. So you're going to be enthusiastic and you're going to be crisp and you're going to be able to to nail that talk. So uh, if you got anxiety, um, which a lot of Parkinson's patients do, it's, 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 it's robbing your courage neurotransmitter, right? If you strip someone of their dopamine, of course, they're going to they're gonna be a little more anxious. I would absolutely give the, the cannabidiol uh, a try. So for sleep, the one thing I got wrong on my YouTube talk was there was a controversial study on CBD and sleep. Now there is a large-scale trial on sleep, and what we know is THC disturbs sleep architecture. CBD does not. THC disturbs sleep architecture. CBD does not. And after 20 years of practicing, I'm going to tell you, a glass of red wine or, or, or weed for certain people helps them fall asleep. Without a doubt, it is a miracle for them. The problem is it wrecks their sleep architecture later, and they don't stay asleep. Right. That's where we're also putting a constant glucose monitor on them. What's happening to their glucose at three in the morning? We're also putting a looky ring on them. What's happening to their oxygen levels? Uh, or is, is hypoxia or hypoglycemia waking them up? Right. If you have a glass of wine, you're going to fall asleep as the blood sugar is coming down. But then you get to three in the morning, you go, whoa, glucose of 62. Right. And that'll pop you up. So what they did in this follow up study is they gave people 300 milligrams of CBD in the nighttime, and it did not uh, interrupt sleep architecture. And I said, wait, this is an uplifting um, uh, productivity molecule. How does it not get in the way of sleep? And I'll tell you how. Every reason I've seen in 20 years of 
private practice, right? 30 years of doing medicine, whether it was riding with the ambulance or, or free med or hospice or all, all, the, all the stuff I did before um, private practice, um, sleep issues are based on inflammation, right? Is it inflammatory from <laughs> apnea? Is it uh, inflammation from blood sugar dropping? Is it inflammation from a tooth abscess? Is it inflammation from a concussion and now the microglial keep uh, going on and, and it's a feed forward inflammatory cycle? So I think um, CBD is helping people sleep because it's putting out inflammation. I did 10 years of retirement community at uh, Fraser Meadows Retirement Community. You guys probably know Balfour and Fraser or Cadillac facilities here for independent living with assisted living, transitioning into memory care. And I can't tell you how many people do well on Advil or Tylenol PM. They're dampening their cytokine storms so the pineal gland can work and release melatonin and they can set a proper sleep cycle. So, so you know, I, I take about 75 to 150 milligrams of CBD isolate morning and 75 to 50 milligrams somewhere between 12 and 5 p.m. Um, and I did that organically when the pandemic came. Blue Sky really saved my ability to not unravel and stay up late and read the latest paper on COVID and blah, blah, blah. Um, but then that Brazilian study came out on the frontline workers, and ironically, they were using 300 milligrams of CBD. So I forgot to tell you on that, um, frontline workers, the punchline, the CBD takers with the exercise DVD and the therapy had statistically significant reduction in anxiety, depression, emotional exhaustion, and burnout. And there are very specific questionnaires to extract those in psychology, psychiatry. And, and that is relative to the people who are doing therapy and, um, and also the exercise DVD. All right, so um, we also have a sleep formula called sleep, and that is 50% CBD, 50% CBN. There's not enough hard data for me to feel comfortable on CBN is for sure the miracle molecule for sleep, but the feedback we get on um, on our sleep formula is extraordinary. And we have uh, 10 people tracking their WHOOP rings and they are getting in the WHOOP algorithm uh, improved quality and quantity of sleep. So, you know, um, that that is one of the biggest repeat purchase products, which which always tells you something. Um, you know, it's, it's people don't come back and buy stuff. It's not doing anything for them. So um, pain. So CBD is a phenomenal modulator of pain, but there's a couple of things it does here. Um, it also uh, modulates and attenuates endothelial nitric oxide synthase. Endothelial, this is the nitric oxide that enhances blood flow, right? Part of the way Viagra and Cialis work is, is on the ENOS for the endothelial nitric oxide synthase. A lot of times with my Parkinson's patients, freezing cold hands, freezing cold feet, we have drip system problems. The perfusion, the water isn't getting to the garden beds, right? So the cell, the seed is, is not getting its needs met. So I love that um, this is a positive modulation. And then for those of you who have ever used um, capsaicin cream, right, the hot pepper cream from the old uh, health food store back in the day, um, you rub that on and it depletes something called uh, substance P and it works through a very specific mechanism of action that I never found anything else natural to do the same mechanism of action. CBD does the same pathway as capsaicin cream without the greasy hot burning uh, effect. So, so what you do is you put on capsaicin cream depletes this pathway so you don't have as much um, pain, but it, it's a pain in the butt and, and, and it's hot and burny. Uh, you get the same thing off, off cannabidiol, orally and topically. So um, if you have topical pain, knee pain, ankle pain, definitely try the Deep Relief Balm and the uh, Max Relief Balms. They're amazing. Every CrossFitter, every Jiu-Jitsu guy, every um, uh, triathlete, biker, runner that we, that we work with has um, a Deep Relief Balm. And then um, I actually was wake skating the other day on, on the Boulder Res, and it was first couple of days out, and I tweaked my elbow a little bit so I can show you guys what you want to do here is you want to just paint it on. Remember Karate Kid, kind of wax on, wax off. Um, and then you let that um, sit for a minute, and then you can rub it in deeply, give yourself a little mini massage, and this product is miraculous. So I also, I don't just use it for chronic inflammation and pain, I use it for my elite athletes as well. 
plantar fasciitis, rub it all over. And then I also love the Agoscu pain-free method. If you haven't seen the Agoscu pain-free book, um, that's a great book and I love foundation training as well. So we, we use the topicals and then we retrain people how to load their biomechanics properly and they uh, live long and prosper. So glycine also gets mediated for pain. So neuropathic pain is what I think about. I also use um, cannabidiol for shingles. Um, and that's because that, that's a classic example of a neuropathic pain. So MS, we have a medical doctor that lets me talk about her story. She was an amazing um, world-renowned surgeon. And then one day her hands didn't uh, work in surgery and she had MS. And one of the biggest things she has is spasticity that doesn't allow her legs to sleep. This was um, uh, CBD and sleep. This was specifically on cannabidiol, the use of cannabinoids for sleep, a critical review on clinical trials. And it showed that cannabidiol isolate is shown as supplement to be advisable for MS patients to reduce fatigue, pain, spasticity, and ultimately improve mobility, right? So this is copied from this study. Um, the biggest thing for her is the spasticity messes with falling and staying asleep. 300 milligrams of um, blue sky isolate breaks through her uh, spasticity and she sleeps through the night. All right, so how do we dose this stuff? Um, you know, everyone's a little bit different and we're always honest with that. Everything from gut biome to liver metabolism to, um, to if you work out or not, um, insulin resistance, all that stuff matters. On average, we'll start with 300 to 120 milligrams of CBD isolate. Um, the different products, the CBD CBN for sleep, the Max Relief, which is the CBD CBG, and the CBD Original are all coming in little gel caps. And um, those gels, you're just gonna, uh, we like to do what's called the Blue Sky Challenge. You chew up two sky gels. I don't know if we can do this, but I know Mary's on, on the call here. Maybe we can mail out everyone some, some samples. But we would chew out um, two, chew up two sky gels and, um, and then you just hang out and see if you feel a little bit better. If you don't feel anything, which is rare but, but can happen, you chew another two sky gels, and that would be 120 milligrams of CBD isolate. And I do that in the morning and midday. So somewhere uh, around th 30 to 300 really for Parkinson's um, is, is the sweet spot. Over here, we put cognitive and mood disorders, and I do put Parkinson's in the cognitive or the neurological. Um, we need higher dosing. So, so my comfort zone is about 30 to 300 milligrams. We do have one Parkinson's patient who takes 900 milligrams of cannabidiol a day. That is not my patient. That is someone that uh, Greg Carpenter, our founder, works with. Um, so if we were going that high, I, I would always track a metabolic panel and just watch liver enzymes. And then also don't always blame the natural medicine guy, right? If, if you're um, on cannabidiol and your liver enzymes go up and you're on 17 other meds, it might be the mixing. And that's what we talk about on our next page. But three, 30 to 300 milligrams is a good dosing. Um, we also have some dosing help online. Um, and then remember, most of our patients are still doing all the other stuff. You got to clean up your diet. You got to get moving. But even if you, if I have a fibromyalgia patient who can't move and they're eating Krispy Kremes and they have raging apnea, we give them a 30 to 300 milligram CBD. They will feel improvement. And I'll usually use that as a bridge to following through on diet and lifestyle, getting moving, et cetera, et cetera. Um, always correct your vitamin D and uh, eat lots of fatty fish and get those omega-3s up. Um, the biggest drug interaction is traditional or old school um, uh, blood thinners. So warfarin, cumin, and heparin take the same clearance pathway of CBD. They go out the same exit of the Bronco Stadium parking lot, right? So you can log jam. This is one um, report, not a study, one report of a guy who had enhanced blood thinner off Coumadin while on CBD. My own um, general contractor was on 300 milligrams of blue sky while on Coumadin, and we tracked his INRs, that that's how quickly your blood clots, they did not move, right? That being said, I'm not anti um, doctor saying, hey, I saw this, I'm going to publish it so other doctors can be thinking about drug-herb interactions, right? So um, 
the only other thing I'll say is um, more than 20 milligrams of CBD isolate is contraindicated for glaucoma. So that is one of the things where actually THC is indicated. If you guys remember uh, W Sr., George Bush uh, Sr., he had glaucoma and he took Marinol, a THC capsule for his, for his uh, glaucoma. Um, when using any um, medicinal herb or prescription, higher dosing um, means just watch an occasional um, uh, metabolic panel. And then um, Gast and Tyler et al. watched uh, interactions with high dosing CBD and anti seizure meds. Um, and what they saw was um, for very, very stubborn seizures, the, when they added CBD to the kids on prescriptive therapy already, they controlled seizures uh, statistically better. They did have occasional liver enzymes uh, elevating as well, but remember, they're on hardcore seizure meds. That these are not all the trials on seizures and CBD, which get which is where it gets a lot of its press from, were on kids who are also on uh, anti-seizure meds. So, so it was as a complementary additive therapy. All right. Um, here's a list. Uh, you guys are going to have this recorded, but if you're on any of these, you know I would watch a little bit more of um, your liver enzymes. And again, this is not much different than, hey, if you're on an antibiotic, it's not a good time to be drinking tons of wine, right? So it's, it's, not, it's not much different than that. So like shopping for high quality fish oil, you're shopping for the EPA DHA, not the rest of the fish fat. So when Costco has a super sale on the, on the end cap and it says a thousand milligram capsules, 500 of them for 12 bucks, you gotta read the label and say for that thousand milligrams of fish fat, how many milligrams of EPA DHA are there? That's what you're paying for. That's what the jealous trial showed in Japanese men, 2000 milligrams of EPA arrested heart attack stroke, not the rest of what's in the fish fat, right? So if that fish oil has 100 milligrams of EPA and 100 milligrams of DHA, that is 200 milligrams of EPA DHA per capsule. And we need you at 3000 a day when I'm dosing fish oil for cardiology, inflammation, Parkinson's, MS, et cetera, right? So you pay for the actual active ingredient in the studies and everything else is just marketing scams, right? So, and, and Costco has some good high concentrated fish oil. They also just have some other stuff that you're not reaching therapeutic dosing. It's about getting the therapeutics. So you really wanna look for, do they have, um, uh, it, everything I'm sharing today is on cannabidiol isolate, right? Um, if a bottle says it's 3,000 milligrams of full spectrum hemp, but it only has 500 milligrams of CBD and they're selling it for $54, you have to times that by six. 500 times six is 3,000 milligrams of CBD isolate to get to $125 retail of Blue Sky 3,000 milligrams of CBD isolate. So we're really proud of our prices. We're not a bloated company that sponsors Michael Jordan and so on and so forth. So you will not find a per milligram cannabidiol cheaper, zero THC final batch tested, zero uh, um, pesticide free final batch tested and purity and potency third party certificate of analysis. So um, we're, we're proud of what we do. We love helping those going through chronic inflammation and neuro, neuroinflammation and, and all we wanna see is improved quality of life so you can live long and prosper. Thanks for your time. Great, thank you so much. We have a few questions. Um, the first is Suzanne Stewart. Um, if you want to connect to um, the audio, I see that your hand is raised. I also see that you've typed in a question, so I'll read that one first. Um, what is considered excessive caffeine? Does CBD help neuro neuropathy in feet? Please go over the four receptors. Yeah, so real quick, um, I really fell in love with a book called The Body Type Diet and Lifetime Nutrition Plan. That's written by Dr. Bravenel. It's dated. One of my very PC sister-in-laws tells me there's fat shaming language in there, and I agree. It's written in the 80s, so in the body type quiz, it says, if you uh, accumulate weight, you get saddlebags. I could see if a, particularly a woman had a dad who called her saddlebag or something like that, that could trigger you. Aside from the 80s language and not taking into account food allergy, food sensitivity, and it's a phenomenal, uh, read the first 50 pages, take the quiz, and find out if you're more of a thin, lanky body type, which most of our Parkinson's patients are. I don't find as many barrel-chested Tony Soprano style. Um, or if you're more of a husky lineman, 
right? This is the difference between a wide receiver on the Broncos and a lineman. The thin lankies actually don't do that well with caffeine. It swings their blood sugar all over the place. They think they do because they like to be a hummingbird on crack and they go, and they, and they hypoglycemia crash. The substantial body, and they also don't do well with intermittent fasting. So they do well with solid breakfast, lunch, uh, mid-afternoon snack, dinner, and they do well with animal protein complex carb and fat at every meal. I'm one of those body types. I'll do a rice cake with Kite Hill dairy-free cream cheese or avocado, um, salmon lox, and some capers as a 4 p.m. snack. Um, if I'm not seeing patients or not being social, I'll throw some red onion on there. Um, so, so that's the book I love. It does not take into account food sensitivity, food allergy. It was written before we knew everything we know about gluten, um, but it, is a, it takes the Ayurvedic doshas, Vata Pitta Kapha, and mixes them with the endomorph, mesomorph, ectomorph, Western body typing, and tells you, Thin and lanky, mindful of the caffeine. You should really not be doing much of any of it. If you're a more substantial body type, uh, the tortoise and the hare conversation, you actually do well with a cup or two of caffeine. So um, if you're going over like a double shot espresso a day, two double shot espresso, you're missing something in your physiology. You're, you're caffeine seeking because your you're mitochondria are not making. Um, energy. So um, it's the 5-HT1A receptor for serotonin, the dopamine 2 receptor um, for dopamine, the GABA A receptor for GABA or cool, calm, and collective, and then the adenosine receptors that I went over today um, for that. If you want more on that, you can do the YouTube CBD 101, and uh, I, I go into more. Now, that, that talk was done for the Colorado Association of Naturopathic Doctors, um, but there, there's more more depth in there. I can't remember the third part of that question. There was a third part. Um, Caffeine, receptors. receptors. Yeah, we did the four receptors. Yeah, good. Uh, does CBD help neuropathy in feet? Yeah. Uh, so again, like capsaicin cream, and I go more into that. Um, I, I I can drown people with biochemistry by accident. So Carrie Horn, one of our um, uh, uh, Blue Sky members, really helped me trim the fat on this. But I go really deep into neuropathic pain on that talk, and it's the TRPV1 receptor. It's basically it it just like capsaicin, it blocks neuropathic pain. And what I found is that allows us to get back to things that help blood flow to distal nerves, right? Your, your, your fingers and toes and feet are far away, like exercise. So, so you can literally rub this on your plantar fascia. I, I would trial the, the balm for that. The other thing is acupuncture can be very helpful. I used to at Fraser Meadows Retirement Community do um, electric acupuncture, pretend this is the knee all the way down to the toes. And then I would do B12 shots in stomachs 36. That's called the three mile of the leg. It's a point that soldiers used to rub a rice grain on to get an extra three miles of, of march in the acupuncture model. So I would consider some electric acupuncture with a local acupuncturist, maybe some B12 shots and acupuncturists can do B12 in, in Colorado. Um, and then and then also get moving. So modulate that neuropathy so that you can get your blood flow up. If you can't feel your feet well and you're worried about balance issues, work with a trainer or you know, see if you can do some rock steady boxing or or get on a bike or do anything where you don't have to rely on your feet as much to avoid falling. We obviously want you to move and arm swing, but we don't want you to, to break a hip. Great. And then Jane Johnson, I'm going to unmute you so you can ask your question. And then you'll just have to unmute yourself. I'm sorry, but I did that by a mistake. I don't really have a question, but thank you for doing this for us. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. That was nice to hear a voice. There are <laughs> humans out there. I'm, I'm so speaking in front of people and it's it's just nice to hear hear you guys all right and then um we had one question can we get copies of the charts charts used in this presentation yeah i'm fine with that um we uh we usually just have our admin deal with that so you can you can take that up with the with the crew later i'm sure they're happy to do that 
great. And then um, we had a question about, is there a study that someone might be able to join? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, clinicaltrials.gov, clinicaltrials.gov is where you can learn how to navigate Parkinson's and CBD trials, and there's a lot going on in Anschutz. Um, you can also just call um, Blue Sky directly. I'm working on seeing what we do want to study. Do we want to study tremors? Do we want to study neuropathy? Do we want to study mood? Do we want to study anxiety in the Parkinson's population? But I, I would love to have an IRB where we could um, st start doing uh, a, a one uh, evidence-based medicine is just changing one variable, a one variable change, um, and maybe even have um, a control group. And and I like it when people do dosages, um, like they did with Janet Parkinson's. Um, I think it was 200 milligrams of CoQ did not help Parkinson's, 600 milligrams did, and 1600 milligrams was less effective. So I thought that was really cool to learn that a, a mid-range dose of CoQ hits the mark for Parkinson's because it saves money on capsules you have to take. So we'd love to do that. If you're really interested in that, um, you can you can reach out to uh, uh, Blue Sky, give us a call. Uh, Mary or Greg um, can start compiling a list and then, um, I just started a 501c, the Roots and Branches Charitable Fund, and it's for research and imaging care. It's when you get calls from people who are dead broke, like uh, a mom with two daughters living in the tent, um, to do their health care as well. So, so we do want to start doing some work. And she has ACT trials. Do you know what? Yeah. If you need it, reach out to me. All right, great. Um, Alice Jordan, I'm going to unmute you and then you'll just have to unmute yourself to ask your question. Hi, so um, I have uh, two questions and an observation. Observation first is uh, you say that Anschutz is all over these studies. It's my uh, where uh, not only a PD, but we're also an MS family. And I, it's my observation that Kaiser shuts down any conversation. We've been to the MS neurologist, we've been to the Parkinson's neurologist, and every time we've brought up CBD, the conversation is immediately shut down. And I have my own, I mean, being a cynic, I would say, probably no money in CBD for those big uh, corporations, but, um, so I did. I did want to point out that that was shut down as as uh, more as most recently as last week. We were at the neurologist. So my question: In um, ten years ago, when the National MS Society was all over cannabinoids, it was mentioned one needed a teensy bit of THC to activate the CBD. Is that? the thinking these days, or do you find that, that more research has shown that that's no longer current? Yeah, it's absolutely incorrect, and um, I'm not anti-THC. I want to be clear about that. Uh, you can you can find out what works for you, but that MS study that I showed you on spasticity um, and fatigue, mm -hmm. that was 300 milligrams of cannabidiol, period. It's over. Cannabidiol is a standalone anti-inflammatory. Right, just like EPA is in fish oil, just like vitamin D is, just like glutathione is, you do not need entourage effect. And to be very um, clear about that, I see wild chronic inflammation and I see wild autoimmunity. And I'm actually scared to use full spectrum hemp in those cases because you're, de you're putting 100 phytocannabinoids into a body that has an autoimmune attack on itself. And how do you know if one of those phytocannabinoids isn't going to increase Th1, which is your cytotoxic and natural killer cells, or increase humoral immunity, make more antibodies to tag white matter? And we put CBD from the research in the same category with EPA, DHA, vitamin D, vitamin, probiotics, fatty acids, and glutathione that they're immune modulating. So if the immune system is running too hot, it brings it to the middle. If the immune system is running too cold and now cancer cells are going rogue and we don't have a seek and destroy, it brings it to the middle. So I love that. And then I'm gonna tell you, 
the very complicated healthcare world you guys are navigating, right? My my old fraternity brother's dad had over 500 people at his funeral because he was a brain surgeon in New York. He was a neurologist. He was a neurosurgeon. And many kids, now adults, came up to my friend and said, your dad saved my life, right? That's extraordinary. In the same breath, we have people, you go to the neurologist to find out what you have, not why you have it. And then you're given a drug for the symptoms of what you have, period, right? I'm not even down on that. That's, but I know what I'm to expect from the neurologist. When Parkinson's number one ingredient for making dopamine for the body is oxygen. And you don't have a neurologist order a sleep study on a Parkinson's patient, yet the data is in, right? concussions come with higher rates of apnea. When's the last time an avalanche player took a concussion and their doctor recommended a sleep study, right? So, so this is where we fail. And part of it is, you know, these are really smart, uh, big, generous hearted, goody two shoes who passed an MCAT and did rounds, but now they're stuck in a model where they got you for five minutes. And the only thing that works in that is drug for symptom. And holistic community is falling prey to supplement for symptom, right? I want a nutraceutical that's being applied to address the mechanism of action of the disease, right? And that's where cannabidiol has a lot of promise for things like MS and uh, and Parkinson's. But but I mean it. You should not just be doing CBD. You should be getting a, a looky monitor, L-O-O-K-E-E. -E. See if your oxygen drops below 90%. Ask your doctor for a constant glucose monitor. If, if you think you're in ketosis, make sure you're in ketosis. Get a keto mojo meter, right? Make sure your T3 thyroid hormone is tuned up. Make sure your anabolic steroids, your powerful anti-inflammatory anabolic steroids. So I feel for you. I couldn't agree more. It's meek and lame when you leave with just Here's the drug we're using for MS. Here's a drug we're using for Parkinson's. And that's a guy who, if we have a good drug trial, if we have a drug that's really good, doesn't come with long-term side effects, I'm not anti-prescription, right? But a recent trial in the Journal of Nuclear Medicine, you can put Journal of Nuclear Medicine Dementia Lipophilic Statins into um, Google, and you'll get the paper that showed patients with mild cognitive impairment, where are my keys? They're not demented yet who were put on lipophilic statins converted to dementia quicker than the non-statin takers and the hydrophilic statin takers, right? So for me, that tells me if I have a Parkinson's patient who's 65 and starting to have memory issues and they're on 10 milligrams of atorvastatin or Lipitor, right? We have to talk about ramping off of that with their prescriber. And we have to give them things like um, flush niacin and know how to dose it and have a prescriber talk to them about well call or cholestyramine, miracle drugs for arresting heart attack or stroke that help the brain, right? So, so yeah, you're in a frustrating model. And I'm sure you feel really shut down and disempowered when you bring ideas that you want your team leader to weigh in on. And, and, and that, that blows. And a lot of that, unfortunately, is just time and space issues, right? They don't even have time to entertain that, right? They have 40 other patients. And they don't get to critically think through any of those cases. So, so people begin to slumber. Sorry, right. heavy, heavy, heavy answer. <laughs> so, big, big, big question, heavy answer. Sorry, but that's on my deathbed. I want to change the healthcare model from what you have to why you have it. That's 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 the reason I go to work every day. Right. And when you when you have why you have it, you can start doing fun stuff that works and doesn't just stagnate you or, 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 or you know, slow kill you slower. Um, it actually restores quality of life. Right. All right. And I know we're a little bit over time. Um, do you have time for two more questions? All right. Great. So the next one would be is CBD effective in minimizing tremors? Yes. Uh, anecdotally, clinically, yes. So what I just said is absolutely yes. So Greg Carbon, our founder, has an extraordinary um, Parkinson's case where he gets wild reduction from about a 10 to a 2 on his tremors. I also use it for essential tremors and or side effects from um, 
from antipsychotics. So we have a lovely woman who experiences schizophrenia and she's stable on very low dose Seroquel and Abilify, but she hates it because uh, even though she feels good in her mood, her energy's good, she walks, she hikes, um, she's, she's totally grounded and running a functional, productive life, she does this. Hardcore uh, unilateral tremor, 75 to 150 milligrams of the blue sky completely neutralizes uh, her tremors, right? So, so we don't just use it for tremors of Parkinson's induced. We also, and remember antipsychotics shut off dopamine. So that's how you get movement issues uh, and tardive dyskinesia and tremors from, from things like antipsychotics. Yes, yes, yes. But that is something I'd like to do uh, as a one variable change with uh, cannabidiol. Do we need uh, 600 milligrams across the board? Is 300 work? Is it 150? What, what are we missing? You know, and again, everyone gets screened for oxygen to the brain, glucose to the brain, T3 thyroid to the brain. These are all things that are, are, are the most important for manufacturing dopamine. Great, and then Alice Jordan, I see your hand has popped up again. I will unmute you. My apologies for the lawn crew outside the window. So um, a quick question, are you just online? Is, is Blue Sky an online or do you have a brick and mortar? Yeah, it's a great question. We have a brick and mortar for inventory, but we have um, Google pins of doctor's offices that carry us as well. and I honestly, I'm in this to learn what cannab cannabidiol is and what to do um, in practice management with inflammatory patients. So um, the, Greg could speak better to, to accessibility. Cool. Um, do I unmute you? Oh. Hey. Well, Dr. D, thank you as always. I, I don't recall if we have one more question, but in regards to the brick and mortar or online, um, oftentimes it is easiest to order online. Um, orders that are received before noon will most often be shipped the same day, um, if afternoon will be shipped the following day, um, all with United States Postal Service tracking information, so you know right where it is. Um, like Dr. D mentioned, you will find us at other naturopathic doctors, physical therapists, massage therapists, chiropractors, et cetera. Um, the one thing that we did want to offer up to everybody, um, based on our relationship with Parkinson's Association of the Rockies, we have an ongoing 20% discount using the promo code PAR, P-A-R, on the website. Um, so more than anything, wanted to say thank you guys for joining, but um, in regards to brick and mortar or online and wanted to make sure that you all had that promo code as well. So thanks again. All right, well, thank you so much, Dr. D. That was a great talk. Um, again, without sponsors like these, we wouldn't be able to provide this information for you all. So I urge you, if you're interested, to go to their website and look at all of that and use the promo code. Um, but thank you so much. Thanks, gang. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day.